Welcome back to Leeds Lately. Before we get into this one, if you could just hit that subscribe button down below, that would really, really help me out because we're trying to hit 6,000 before the start of the season. But yesterday, I released a video about Joel Perot, a bit of a deep dive on him, um, a scouting report, if you will, uh, to show you how he would fit into Leeds' system. And I promised that it would be part one of a three-part series. This is part two, and it is on Gustavo Hamer of Coventry City. Now, Gustavo Hamer is... 26 years old like I said he plays for Coventry his market value is 8 million euros although that does come from transfer market and it's got to be taken with a pinch of salt because I'd imagine that Coventry would maybe want more than that for him uh, his nation is the Netherlands although he was actually born in Brazil um, he's five foot seven he's right footed and he is a central midfielder box to box central midfielder um, Gustavo Hamer then he is um, a bit of a goal scoring and assisting phenomenon in the championship at the moment. Um, in 21 22 season, he scored three goals and got 10 assists. In the 22 23 season, he scored nine goals and 11 assists. 20 goal contributions in a championship season for a central midfielder is nothing short of unbelievable. Um, there are some things that are, before we go on to some really good things about him, there are some things that are a little bit worrying in his statistics. So the first one is, is his pass completion, um, 68% in the fourth percentile, as in 96% of midfielders in similar leagues to him who've played a similar amount of minutes to him have made more accurate passes than him, basically. Um, he's really, really low down on that, but there is a reason for that, and that's because of his progressive passing. He tries a lot of forward balls. Rather than trying to keep it steady and going sideways and backwards, he tries a lot of forward balls. Now, that could be something to do with the way that Coventry play. They could be a little bit Jesse Marsh saying, get the ball forward um, as quick as possible, but yeah, it has to be contrasted against what he does. So progressive passing distance, 286.13 yards per 90, which is the 83rd percentile. So again, uh, he's in the top 17% um, of progressive passing distance. Um, he attempts 12.86 long passes per 90, which is, this is what leads me to believe that he plays a lot of forward balls because that is in the 95th percentile, in the top 5% of players playing forward balls. He plays more than 95% uh, of the rest of them. Um, 5.89 completed though. So out of 12.86 attempted, only 5.89 are completed, which puts him in the 81st percentile, which is still really good, but it means that he's attempting so many um, that it looks good for the ones he's completed because he's just simply attempting so many that some are bound to be on target. But when we go into the analysis and the actual um, the stills and the images that we've got to analyse of his sort of goals and assists and contributions, um, you'll see that he does try to get the ball forward a lot and it is something good to have to progress the ball, but it is something to be aware of that he is not the complete package in terms of um, pass completion and things like that. Um then we're going to have a little look at his defence because he is a, a midfielder. He is a box-to-box -box midfielder. And when you actually look at his defensive statistics that will be on the screen now, uh, tackles 2.8 per 90, which puts him in the 86th percentile. Tackles 1, 1 1.76 in the 89th percentile. Then you've got which thirds they're in. Um, dribblers tackled, dribblers challenged. Um, he does lose about 50% though of tackles with dribblers. Now I'm not sure how that really plays into things as a central midfielder. Um, but you'd think maybe on a counter attack, that could be a little bit of a hindrance if somebody is not great in one on one situations, but he does try and go in for a lot of them. That's why he's so high. Um, Challenges lost per 90 is a little bit worrying. 1.84, which puts him in the 10th percentile. So 90% of players are better than him uh, in that statistic. Uh, so that is a little bit worrying, but he does attempt a lot of tackles. He does try and go in there. And if he was to play next to somebody like Tyler Adams, I think that would be negated a little bit by how good Tyler Adams would be at coming in and sweeping up the ball, giving it back to Hamer, giving it to another midfielder and trying to take the ball forward again. So if we can keep hold of Tyler Adams, I think Gustavo Hamer would sit next to him really, really nicely. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at, just because it's so ridiculous um, in terms of statistics, that is there's plenty more to come other than that. Um, but that's his shooting. Um, Non-penalty goals 
he's in the 96th percentile, 0.23 per game. Um, Non-penalty XG, 95th percentile. Shots total, 97th. Assists, 98th. Uh, expected assist, 96th. Non-penalty XG plus ex- um, expected assisted goals, 96th percentile and uh, shot creating actions 95th percentile shot creating actions are um if he is the player who passes it to the player who gets the assist on the shot he is part of that shot creating action so it's basically like a a way of measuring a pre-assist that could come from a corner a free kick or in play um fully um but yeah, I just wanted to go through those because they are absolutely ridiculous statistics for a central midfielder. And uh, I think it would be really, really good to have a player like that in your team because you always need to have your goals come from all over the park. And I think somebody like Gustavo Hamer would provide that little bit of extra uh, impetus in terms of goal scoring when your strikers may be having a little bit of a drought. Um So now we're going to have a little look at some stills, some screenshots of his highlights over the season, over the course of the season, and a little bit of how I think he will be good for a Daniel Farker system. So as you can see on your screen now, again, I said this yesterday, I apologize for the, the, uh, the blurriness really of the, of the video. Um, but that's just the way it was uploaded by, uh, FS Scout, so go and check him out if you want. Uh, I've used his stuff here, so I may as well give him a little shout out. Um, but yeah, the first situation basically, the Coventry player gets it from the goalkeeper, uh, and he needs an option, and he's playing out from the back. And now this is what we talked about in the Daniel Farker Tactics Explained video: is that he would want one of his holding midfielders, one of his central midfielders, to drop deep and come and receive the ball, and that's exactly what happens here. So. The second shot, you'll see that Gustavo Hamer receives the ball and he's got a player tight to him and the player comes towards him and Hamer absolutely sends him for a hot dog and I think he nearly falls over. Hamer comes away with the ball and then he's uh, able to sprint off with it and and create an attack from that. And that is exactly the sort of thing that Daniel Farker would be looking for in his central midfield as somebody who can drop deep, get the ball good with his feet, can drive forward and get leads up the pitch uh, and is able to uh, find his teammate. Hopefully it, with those passing stats, maybe not, but you'd like to think he'd be able to find a teammate, get leads up the pitch. And, and that's a really, really good thing to have because Daniel Farker would be looking for a player in midfield who can play out from the back like that. The second scenario we're going to come on to is a little bit more of an attacking scenario. You can see that he has the ball right now at the moment and he's going to pass it into the bloke on the edge of the box. I think it might be Jokerez um, and the ball comes into him, but Hamer doesn't um, sort of stand on ceremony. He makes a run and as you can see from the next one, uh, Jokerez flicks it around the corner for Hamer, who's carried on his run nicely um, towards the edge of the box. And he's going to go and cross the ball in right across that corridor of uncertainty. Um, and it, it does actually eventually end up in a goal, not directly, but um, it's sort of the next header after it's cleared, then goes in the back of the net. Um, and obviously Hamer got the shot creating action for that, like I explained a minute ago. So another one where... He's come forward, he's not going to stand on ceremony, he's going to come and get the ball, look for it again and then try and put the ball in the box into dangerous areas and I think that's really good to have because yes, he'll bring you out from the back but also he will really help you out in those attacking situations and like I mentioned before, if Tyler Adams is the sort of player that we have in here um, next to him, then he can sit back uh, and allow Gustavo Hamer a little bit more um, freedom to go forward and and get himself into situations like this because I think that could be really helpful because like I say, he scored so many goals last season um, that it'd be excellent to allow him the freedom to go forward. Uh, The last situation we're going to look at then is, uh, I think it's a Huddersfield player here, tries to pass the ball into his striker who's trying to get his back to goal and uh, hold the ball up on the halfway line. But Hamer uses his strength, outstrengths him, gets in front of him. You can see the Wigan, uh, the Wigan, the, um, I think it's Huddersfield. The player um, in front of him there, he's almost fallen over and Hamer is able to get away with the ball, but he doesn't again stand on ceremony. He has a look up, sees that Jokerez is in front of him and that there's a gap and he slides him through perfectly towards goal uh, and Jokerez slotted that one under the keeper and Coventry scored from that situation. So having that little bit of bite and that that ability to say, I'm going to go for this one, uh, nip in front of his man, get the ball, play the ball through to um, 
to his striking uh, his striking partner, get him through on goal and try and get him to score a goal. And, and that, again, is a different situation, but another thing that will be really good for Daniel Farker's leads. Um, if we're playing a mid-block, um, sitting in the midfield, waiting for those opportunities, and that then was an opportunity to press. He got the ball, um, obviously slid, slid in a nice through ball, uh, and it ended up in a goal as well. So I think that will be another sort of um, string to his bow, um, for why he should sign for Leeds. So yeah, that has been the Gustavo Hamer scouting report and deep dive. Um, there is going to be another one tomorrow. Like I said, this is part two. Part three will be out tomorrow and that will be Ryan Manning, who is currently a free agent, but spent last season at Swansea. So I shall see you in that one. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching Leeds lately.